Okay, here we go. Happy sixth anniversary. China and I was getting ready to go into China I was all by myself I felt like the Lord said go to China go teach English it's better to have very little money and go to China and follow me than to stay in Korea and just have very little money or very lot of money but it was my time so after I had just finished singing to 5,000 teachers being the only school with a completely English play in Seoul Korea modeling my worth having a teachers seminar that we organized where we taught people how to build English libraries for very low costs to increase their English programs. I was at the top of my game in, Engl in Korea to where even uh, Longman and I were talking about moving into being a sales rep for their books because they said that the schools were ripping me off and that I was better. Come on in. Nancy. Bella. Pastor Holly uh, from uh, King Jesus Love, Pastor Brenda Velez. Welcome. Welcome. This is uh, Pastor Nancy, Nancy Green. That's from my church, uh, Brenda Velez. Pastor Brenda Velez. Nice to meet you, Brenda. Keep going. Don't turn it off. Yeah, come on, sit down. We're going to have dinner in a few minutes, so we're just having a little meeting. So, okay, just sit down. Okay, so, we, this is a very interesting testimony. That's why we're recording. For posterity, this is a very interesting testimony because the whole way that I was able to get to Hong Kong is that in Korea, we went out to a university and we started giving away sodas, Coca-Cola, and saying, Jesus loves you. And I was like, I don't want to be here at this university, but the church I'm working at in Seoul, they said, you need to go out and minister to the youth. So we went out, we handed out Coca-Colas, and the only person, the only person who wanted to know about Jesus, as we were leaving, we got in the elevator, gave her a flyer, and talked to her. She was studying Korean and was from Hong Kong. Her name was Wing, Wing Lo. So she hung out and came and visited church in Korea with Pastor Chris Robershaw and I, and we became friends. And then when I came to China, I said, I gotta go to Hong Kong, because if you go to China, you go first to Hong Kong. That's the gateway to China. That was what was in my mind. So I came here February 9th, left February 18th, uh, about six years ago, and went to China. But when I was here in Hong Kong, I said, wow, this is a good place. For some reason, I connected with Hong Kong. I wanted to be in Hong Kong. So I went to China, and that was the most scary place in the world for me when I, when I got there. I got off the airplane, and there was nobody in the airport. It was dark. I found a restroom, got, went to the restroom, and then as I was getting off, I had stopped at the CLC Christian Bookstore and bought as many Christian things as I could to take with me to China because I didn't know if I'd have any Christian things. And I had my iPod, so I had music I could listen to and preaching I could listen to. And I went into China and the Lord 
did an amazing thing. A teacher that I helped in Korea who was from China, her husband was airport police. So I get there, and all of a sudden this policeman is coming to me, stern, and he's really big. I know he can take his club and just beat the heck out of me. And he says, Ken, you take good care of my wife. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that's my entry into China. They're taking my bags. They're not checking anything. And that's how I went into China. And they got me to the person I needed to see, and I went to my new job. And the first night I was in the university in Shandong, in Jinan, and I was at 9.30, couldn't get any food or anything, just go to bed. And I was like, this is so isolating. But over the course of the four and a half months that I was in China, the Lord introduced me to many, many Christians, and I met, I would say, the ugliest woman I had ever met. But she had the biggest heart for Jesus, and I'd give her 200 Hong Kong dollars every weekend, and she would make like 20 course dinner, send me home with bags of food, and we would feed 25 uh, students who couldn't even afford a Bible, couldn't afford 10 Hong Kong dollars for a Bible. And we would buy as many Bibles as we could and give them out, and officially, I was not allowed to do anything except teach, but I can say from my experience that at least two people came to Jesus, even from my, my student time. Not because I told them anything, but later on, as we remained friends, they would come back to me and say, I came to Jesus. Not because I was breaking the law in China. And we'd have these dinners, and God moved. But one of the reasons that I came back to Hong Kong is that it was very isolating for me. There was a lot of good things that happened, but it was very isolating. So when I come back to Hong Kong and when people choose to work in China, we want to do whatever we can to keep in connection so they're not isolated. Even my two Filipino ladies who've been a part of the church the last few years who are up in China now, they'll call me all the time and they're really isolated. So we need to pray for people who are doing work in China and committing. Many friends that I have who are committing to years and years of being in China, but they don't have the same opportunities to worship in public and to do what we're doing in Hong Kong. So we need to pray for them. I believe that when I first left China, I would cry all the time that I had let God down. And Jesus was unhappy because I was in Hong Kong selling out while millions and millions of people in China were perishing. But it took a while and finally the Lord said, I need you here in Hong Kong. You're just going to get in trouble in China. And little blessings that God would give me is where I live now. There's so many mainlanders every weekend fighting in Tung Chong on the street here. There's so many mainlanders. And this new Chinese CD that will come out next week. Ophelia, give me five. Yeah. How, many, how many years have I been talking about a Chinese CD? <laughs> uh, many years. Many years. Three years, four years, I've had a vision of a Chinese CD and we could never get it done. And even this last year, we had the recordings done in August, and it still took six months to get it done. But our good friend Canary, with perfect disc production, she just told me yesterday, we're printing it. Amen. We're printing it out. Amen. So she said, um, our machine that does the wrapping of the CDs is broken. We'll give you nice bags so that people can have them reusable CD bags. Or you can wait. And I said, I'll take the bags because I don't want to wait anymore. <laughs> but that if, if we need to, we can do, do rapping next time. Okay? So then we waited for a few extra songs and they didn't come. So we're ready to go. And it's printing right now by the 25th. Next Saturday we should have them. So if you want to come get some CDs, we should have them by next Sunday. Okay? Jesus 
has allowed me to come to Hong Kong and to stay in a little toilet-sized hotel down the street on Nathan. And I stayed there, and they had like some kind of party place with people, because drunk men would come, come into the elevator with the women kissing them goodbye and all of that. And I just see the death and destruction all over Mong Kok. But I'd also see the great energy of people coming for shopping and lots of energy going on. And before I moved out to Tung Chung, after living here for six months, <coughs> the Lord, He said, don't forget Mong Kok. You need to serve Mong Kok. You need to do something in Mong Kok. So, I went for six months, and I would go to work, come home, do some work grading papers at the little toilet-sized place. They didn't have a kitchen, so I'd go to some restaurant, grade papers. Okay. Then I'd go buy a video at the one of the cheap video places, a VCD, $19, to watch a movie. And I would, the last few months, I even started painting in the little toilet-sized room in Mokok. I started painting, okay, to keep doing what I do, worshiping the Lord through painting. And finally I moved to Tung Chung in a, a little better place. And that April I had a surgery that was one of the most painful surgeries that anybody can have, where they had to cut a big long tube in my body and drain out poison. And I, my mother, she heard this message from a pastor friend of mine saying, your son's having surgery, bye. And she didn't know what was going on. <laughs> and she's like, he's in China and he's having surgery. But I went to Princess Margaret's hospital I'm so upset. And I thought I was in trouble. I didn't have enough money. I was really worried. It, two days in the hospital, and when I walked out in a lot of pain, because they cut a big hole inside of me. Not outside, inside. I won't tell you where, but it was very painful. <laughs> and I was in pain, and they said, here, your charge is $500. And I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get all these bills and stuff, and no bills ever came. And it's, they said, because if you have a residence card, you, yeah. and you go to Princess Margaret, it's much cheaper. I had no idea. <laughs> so the Lord took me through this thing to where every day, for a few months after that, I had to go in to the government health care, and they had to take off the stuff, and they had to do the change of the dressing and every day I had to open up myself to people in Hong Kong and I found out that people in Hong Kong cared and they they wanted to make sure that I would get better okay and that was my first year in Hong Kong and I was working with the church and finally my pastor released me to come do the ministry in Hong Kong some good friends of mine who are pastors in Tung Chung, they helped me to organize the Kama Cafe. Man was there almost four years ago when we started. Our first time, we were at a table here with a bunch of kids, and I wrote some songs, and we sang them to all the waiters and the waitresses. Man was there. We sang, Jesus in Mong Kok, Jesus in Hong Kong, <laughs> Jesus in me, Jesus in and you. you. And everybody sang to these kids and that was four years ago right four years ago and ever since we've been here at the comic cafe about three and a half years ago september 2008 is that right september 2009 september 2009 we started going out to the street we released the jesus and Moncock cd that we gave to over five thousand people I still hear people say that they remember those songs and they love them. They want me to play them all these years later. And we've given out, we created a book that talked about what we're doing here. We have given away lots of paintings. And we've seen a lot of people touched under the power of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful thing about the Comic Cafe is it's a safe place where people can come and 
not have to worry about church and where the Holy Spirit will move and touch people. Amen. Amen. So, six years later, six years ago, I only had a few friends. I would buy my own dinner alone. I would buy a VCD. And six years later, in Hong Kong, the Lord has allowed me to have lots of friends. The Lord once told me many years ago, if you're going to reach seven million people in Hong Kong, you need, you will make a lot of friends. And I've said goodbye to some of my friends as they leave the country. I've said goodbye to other friends as they've left this world and went into a new country. And we will see incredible things in the future because God wants everyone to be His own. No one to perish, but everyone to have eternal life. Amen. One last thing is when I saw the Jesus and Mongkok visions, that's where all of this came from. Jesus came into Mongkok, a dark place, and dark ran away. So the ministry that we do through Jesus in Mongkok is always, we try to make it as very positive as possible. The Lord has warned me, and He has said, stay away from the darkness. Stay away from the dark things sometimes Christians do. And instead, let the light of God pour into each one of us, and all the darkness will flee away. Amen. So, I ask Ophelia, has she ever fallen asleep here in the Concord Cafe? <laughs> and Ophelia could tell you stories because sometimes in the past the Holy Spirit has been here so strong that everybody fell asleep. <laughs> and pray for the people here like man that God will continue to bless the place and bless his life so that we can continue to have more freedom more people. This has never been a, a, a place where it's my ministry. This has been a place where God's people can come and, and worship Him and know that the future of Hong Kong as 7 million people are reached for the Lord. We need to stop thinking that the percentage will only be 10% or 3%. That God wants, wishes that no one will perish. Amen. And that there will be places, all kinds of alternative spaces as people are coming to the Lord. Yeah, don't just leave it like that. And that the Jesus in Mongkok ministry is very simple. We need to read the Bible, learn about Jesus' life. We need to read the Bible and learn about how the Holy Spirit wants us to do everything, like Mark 16, go into all the world, preach the gospel, and bring, bring, restore sight to the blind, release the captives, bring healing in the streets to the nations. Um, but we need to keep it simple for the young ones, that we don't make them twice the sons and daughters of hell through bringing them in, into the law and through bringing them into a, a religion. Instead, where they can, everyone that comes in has the power of God to be a pastor, to be a leader, to be a prophet. Everyone from day one, everyone has the power of God to pray for somebody. They get saved, or they even say a bad word, or do a bad thing. They can still come back and say, Jesus, help my friend. And God will use them, because we all, in order to be Christians, have the Holy Spirit in us, guiding us from day one. And that we don't lord over the people who come to Him, but we give life. In that corner right there, several years ago, there was a young man named Hay. And Hay, he just hung around. And we were kind of like, okay, Hay. <laughs> but he finally... <laughs> Came, became a Christian, wow. and he became our first Baptist guy that we baptized.
baptized. And Hay now has brought his sister to the Lord. And now they're studying guitar. And the last baptism we just went to, Hay led the worship with the guitar with me. And that's what the ministry is about, lifting up people, encouraging them. Um, ma many more people have been here and have learned to speak and have learned to play music and have learned to tell people Jesus loves them. And now they're in Kowloon Park and now they're in Shinsai Choi and now they're in different churches because it's not about raising up one person except the man Jesus Christ, Amen. our man, our Savior, our God, Jesus Christ, and lifting people up. The pastor that I had many years ago said the church is like an old dog, that you keep encouraging and you keep encouraging and you keep building those lives of the young until eventually the old dog goes to be Jesus in heaven. But there's hundreds of thousands of children because the old dog gave life instead of trying to hold it for himself or herself. So that's what Jesus in Mongkok is about. So here's what I want you to do. Um, we have a dinner and we don't want it to get cold. So we'll shut off here. God bless you. We're going to pray, but we'll do it privately tonight. And uh, thanks for listening. In Jesus' name, amen.